I'm Froggy, and here is a My Froggy Stuff mashup. We all have days where we're feeling a little under the weather. You know, sick. And yes, I am wearing my Harry Potter robe. So to help our dolls feel a little better, we have put together a few of our favorite sick day crafts. From robes to mugs, we've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Sophie, you are going to love this new look. How come every time we have a slumber party, it involves me getting a makeover? Relax, it's fun. Now go look in the mirror. Claudine! Helene, doesn't Sophie look fierce? So classy. But Claudine, I don't think anyone will recognize me. All right, I'll fix it. I just thought you might like to watch the new Monster High 13 Wishes movie. The 13 Wishes movie? So do you want to fix your makeover? Oh yeah, but after the movie. In honor of Monster High's 13 Wishes movie on DVD, we will be making a flat screen TV, remote control, DVD, and DVD player using a printable that is available for free on our blog. We will also be using thin cardboard from cereal boxes, a pencil, thin elastic cord, nail file, ruler, recycled computer paper, cardstock and craft foam, colored beads, craft paint, a toothpick, and glue. I start by cutting out the Monster High printables. Using the image of the TV screen as a guide, I carefully trace around it on a piece of cardboard. Cut it out, use the cardboard as a pattern to trace several more, repeat for the remote, cut them out, stack and glue them together, and I like to glue it so that the unprinted cardboard is on both sides. Use a nail file to sand the edges smooth, to make the backing for the TV and remote. And if I would like a TV with a stand rather than being a wall mount, I cut several smaller rectangles, stack and glue them together, roll a piece of recycled computer paper around a toothpick, stopping to glue along the way. Glue the tube to the smaller rectangle, then glue the larger rectangle to the tube. To make a DVD player, I draw a small rectangle with a ruler, cut it out, use it as a pattern to trace several, Cut a square out of the pattern that is wider than the printable DVD. Use it as a pattern to trace more. Cut them out, then stack and glue them, putting all of the cut pieces together on the inside so that it makes a small cavity for the DVD. Paint it with craft paint. For extra detail, we glue beads to the back. For the audio and video input and output, cut pieces of elastic cord. Dip the ends into silver craft paint. Trace the cutout printable for the DVD onto a piece of cardboard, cut it out, and paint it. Use a hole punch to put a hole in the center of the DVD. Glue the printable to the front of the TV. And if I want my television screen to have a little shine, I just print the printable on glossy photo paper. Glue the control panel to the front of the DVD player. Cut out the cover and the spine of the DVD case. Glue them to a piece of cardstock. Make cuts at the top and bottom. Turn the paper over, fold it to make a crease between the spine and the cover. Continue to cut it out so there's another piece of cardstock for the back. Use a hole punch to cut a circle from a piece of craft foam. Glue it on the inside so the DVD can be held inside. Glue hole punch circles of craft foam to the bottom of the DVD player so when your dolls are ready to watch the 13 Wishes Monster High movie, just plug in the cables. Take out the DVD, put it in the DVD player, and you're done. Happy crafting!
here's a real quick video on how to make a wooden doll bed. I'm using two long wooden dowels, two short ones, four wooden clothespins, and some jumbo popsicle sticks. I'm going to start by gluing this popsicle stick inside of the clothespin. To make my headboard and footboard, I glue a short wooden dowel between the clothespins. I glue the long wooden dowel onto the clothespins to make the frame. Now I'm just going to glue my popsicle sticks going all the way down. Add a mattress and a pillow and you're done. Happy crafting! Profanity is certainly not fun. Using such foul language degrades you, my dear. It leads one to believe that you do not know any better adjectives. And I know that you were raised better than that. If we are to disagree, then let us do so in a civilized manner. Class dismissed. Why should you like us on Facebook? Because it's so fabsome. You can submit photos of your doll crafts for a chance to be in one of our videos. Just be sure to put fan pic in the comment or description box. We even do fun stuff like froggy trivia. Be one of the first to answer to get your name in one of our videos. And we also have GPS Dad. Can you name what city our dad is in? Facebook is also a great way to see what's coming next. Well, see you in the next video. Alright, so I'm going to try out my other mattress here. It's got a gray line. That one fits good too. And I'm going to try out some doll bedding. Oh, look at that. Fits perfect. Goes all the way to the floor. And you got your little pillow here. Alright, and a little pillow. So that looks nice. I like that. And oh, you can also probably make it into like a little day bed. What if you turn it to the side? Tuck this in here. Put the pillows on the side. Yeah, I guess that could work. That's kind of cute. Yeah, I like it. You know what? It looks like a futon. Yeah, it does. Wait, what's a futon? <laughs> I am going to make cans for a doll using recycled computer paper, a toothpick, craft paint, pictures from newspaper ads, clear packing tape, can label printables available at myfoggystuff.blogspot.com, and glue. I start by cutting the paper into thin strips. Curl the paper around a toothpick, add glue to secure the end. After making tubes of different sizes, I paint them with craft paint, cut pictures out of the newspaper, or download and print labels from myfoggystuff.blogspot.com, and here are a few printing tips. For a large doll like an 18 inch, I set my printer to print one copy per page. For a smaller doll, like a 12 inch or a mini doll, I made four copies per page or six copies per page. Carefully cut out the label, apply glue to the back, then wrap the label around the can. For more detail, I can cut out small printouts of nutrition facts and glue them in an empty space. And if my label is not big enough to go all the way around, I just add two. I can choose to leave the tube unpainted and add a label for disinfectant spray. I can glue three together, glue on a label for paper towels, then wrap it in a piece of clear packing tape. And you're done. Happy crafting! Is 
a quick craft. I am going to make fun little mugs using paper, a paper cutter, clear nail polish, a toothpick, a sharpie pen, and a glue stick. I start by cutting thin strips of paper for the bottom and the handle of the mug. Cut a wider strip for the side of the mug. Roll a thin strip of paper around a toothpick. Use glue to secure the end and add more. Once it is the desired size, I glue on the wider strip to make a cylinder. Cut a strip of paper that fits around the mug. Use a Sharpie to draw a design. Glue it onto the outside. Take one of the thin strips, fold and glue it once, then twice. Cut and bend it into a C shape. Glue it to the side. Apply a few coats of nail polish. Allow it to dry between coats. And we did about two to three coats for a glossy enamel finish to make doll-sized Sharpie mugs. And you're done. Happy crafting! going to make house shoes for a doll using craft foam and fleece. I start by tracing my doll's foot onto a piece of craft foam. Cut it out, lay it onto a piece of fleece, cut around it, glue the fleece to the bottom side of the foam. Take another piece of fleece and make sure it can stretch to the side. Take your fleece covered foam and lay it with the good side facing down across the fleece. Cut around it and glue it to the back. To make a neater edge, I'm going to tuck this down in like that. Make a small bow. And then I use a needle and thread to secure it into place. I trace the whole shoe onto another piece of craft foam, cut it out, I glue the foam to the bottom of the shoe. Now repeat to make the other shoe, and you're done. Happy crafting! Why should you like us on Facebook? Because it's so fapsome. You can submit photos of your doll crafts for a chance to be in one of our videos. Just be sure to put fan pic in the comment or description box. We even do fun stuff like froggy trivia. Be one of the first to answer to get your name in one of our videos. And we also have GPS Dad. Can you name what city our dad is in? Facebook is also a great way to see what's coming next. Well, see you in the next video. All right, so let me check my to-do list for today. Get up, eat breakfast, read history chapter, watch Eating Light, check emails. Ooh, do shout out. We want to give a shout out to Music Girl 1024. What's up? Did you just do the shout out in your PJs again? Oh yeah. Note to self, put getting dressed higher on the to-do list. 
I am going to make a tissue box and a shoe box for a doll using a recycled cereal box, scrapbook paper, a ruler, a pencil, tissue paper, tissue, and glue. I start by cutting open a cereal box. Using a ruler, I make a rectangle. Use the ruler to extend the sides, measure and mark the same length on each extension, then draw a line connecting the markings. Cut on the outer edge, make two cuts on one side, then turn it around and do the opposite side. I give it a slight bend to cut a notch out of the center. Fold on the lines drawn, apply glue to the tabs, then fold them up and hold in place. To make the box, apply glue, then cover it with scrapbook paper. Recut the hole in the center Fold the pieces back to glue on the inside, cut a small square of tissue, then push it up through the inside and leave just a little hanging out. By leaving the back open, you can pull the tissue out, then replace it later. To make a shoe box, I built the box the same way, only this time I don't cut the hole in the center. I trace the box onto another piece of the cereal box. Using a ruler, I draw a line around it that is slightly wider. Continue, just as before, to make a lid for the box. Cut a small piece of tissue paper, place it inside the box, followed by the shoes, fold the paper over, put on the lid, and you're done. Happy crafting! going to make a onesie for a doll using recycled t-shirts, belt, snaps, paper and a pencil, measuring tape or a ruler, and a needle and thread. I start by placing the doll on a piece of white paper, making sure the line of symmetry is a little off-center. Using a pencil, I make a mark for the inseam, then go down the leg, from under the arm, all the way to the ankle, from the neck to the shoulder, then remove the doll and better define the lines. Draw a curved line connecting the shoulder to under the arm and I'm going to take the legs in just a little to make it a little more fitting. Place the doll on the paper, make a line above the shoulder and under the arm, then trace around the arm, connect the top of the shoulder to the underarm, make a slight taper at the end to make the sleeve. Mark the sides for the fold on the sleeve and on the body. Then cut them out to use as a pattern. And I'm going to add a little extra to the front so there will be enough material to fold over for the snaps. Fold over some t-shirt material, place the pattern on the fold, cut it out, fold back the add-on, place it on the fold of the material, then cut it out, place the sleeves on the fold, cut two, with all the pieces laid out, I take the front, cut along the fold, lay it with the good side facing down, fold over and hem the top, and we can sew this by hand or use a sewing machine. Lay them so the good side is facing up, lay out and plan where to sew the snaps, sewing them on the front of one side, then on the back of the other, so they overlap and snap into place. I place it on the doll, then fold back the top to create a neckline. Then I'm going to mark it on the other side, remove from the doll, take the piece we cut for the back, lay it good side to good side, flip it over, then sew across the top to the line drawn, connecting the shoulders. Refold down the neckline, fold over for the back of the neck, 
Then begin sewing around the edge to make a hem. After going all the way around the neck, trim off the excess, and I am going to widen the shoulder just a little so it is a better match for the sleeve. Flip the top over so it lays flat. Take the sleeve with good side to good side. I line up the center point with the top of the shoulder, then begin stitching the sides together. And I'm just going to have to move the fabric a little to make the edges line up. Then make a straight stitch going down the side. And I like to go down one side, then back up, then down one side, then back up, tie in the middle, and then cut my string. This will make a double stitch and make it very strong. And when I flip it over, you can see that the sleeve is now neatly attached. Repeat on the other side, cut a rectangle of fabric, fold it in half, then line up the raw edge with the edge of the sleeve, sew a straight line across to make a cuff. Repeat on the other side, then fold it over so the good sides are facing the good sides, line up the edges, Use pins to hold it in place. Sew along the edge from the bottom of the leg all the way to the cuff. Repeat on the other side. Open the bottom of the leg. Cut a rectangle of fabric, fold it in half, and sew it to the bottom. Repeat for the other side, then fold them down for the cuffs. Line up the edges of the fabric. Use pins to hold it in place. Sew a straight line from one leg all the way to the other. Trim off the excess, unbutton it, and turn it right side out to make a basic onesie. I can sew on small buttons for detail. Alter the pattern by extending the foot on the front. Cut the back out the same as before. Sew everything together, leaving the bottom of the feet open. Trace around the doll's foot onto a piece of felt. Cut two. Line up the edges with the bottom of the leg. Sew a straight line going all the way around. Trim off the excess. Turn it right side out to make footies. Cut a long rectangle of fabric. Fold over and hem one side. Then fold it in half with the good side facing good side. Sew along the back edge. Turn it right side out. Measure to fit over the doll's head. And to make sure to get a good fit, I tucked it in around the collar, then carefully stitch it to the existing collar line. I removed the doll to finish sewing, then trimmed off the excess to make a hood. And you're done. Happy crafting! going to make a comfy cozy robe for a doll using some fleece baby blankets from the dollar store. I lay my fleece down with the finished edge on top. I find my center point and then fold the sides down to make a triangle. I lay my doll on top and do a generous marking around the lines of her body. I am going to stitch only on the inside of the arm and down the side. This thin fleece will be easy to hand stitch, however if you're going to use a machine, I would suggest using pens. When making this for a larger doll like an 18 inch, I make sure that the sides overlap. I cut it out. Cut very closely under the arm, turn it right side out. I am choosing to roll my sleeves back and the collar. I cut a strip of fleece about an inch thick, 
stretch it to make a cord, carefully stitch it to the back of the robe, tie it in the front, and you're done. Happy crafting! Thank you for joining us for this My Froggy Stuff mashup. Let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and the Frog Vlog. And we will see you next time.